Hi there. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Tinnitus TV. Today, I am talking to Fat Mike. You know, he might not be the hardest working man in show business, but he's definitely one of the busiest dudes in punk rock. First and foremost, of course, Mike has been the front man of the irreverent band NoFX for the past four decades. But that's really just the start. He's also part of the great new group Co-Defendants and the supergroup cover band Me First and the Gimme Gimmies. He runs the punk label Fat Rec Chords and the new Bottles to the Ground imprint. And he's a serial entrepreneur who has owned gastropubs, vacation homes, marijuana dispensaries, and more. But his latest venture might be his biggest yet, the new Punk Rock Museum in Las Vegas, which features thousands of musical artifacts and offers guided tours led by veteran punks, including Mike himself. Shortly after opening day, and after blowing off our first scheduled interview, the irrepressible, hilariously filthy Mike got on Zoom to talk about the museum, Joe Strummer's last bag of weed, his mom's sex tips, and whatever else popped into his head, really. Enjoy. I did. But remember, this one's not safe for work. Hi. Sorry I'm late. Not a problem, sir. How are you doing today? I'm at the museum, and I was just hanging with Jennifer Finch. Yes. And before that, Warren from the Vandals and Oingo Boingo. And before that, Pete was sick of it all. So really, you just opened this for yourself, right? <laughs> you know what? I, I was bored and I didn't want to travel to see all my good friends. <laughs> Perfect solution. So congrats on getting this thing open. I mean, uh, have, have you worked out all the wrinkles and the kinks and is it like running smooth now or are you still just going by the seat of your pants? Uh, we, uh, we're changing things daily. We're learning. Uh -huh. But uh, I've never experienced so much joy. People are so happy. Oh, I bet. Because like what, whatever, because we did five decades of punk and whatever deck, whatever year you got into punk, when people hit that year, they start crying. <laughs> you know, it's, Great. it's really special. It seems like it all came together pretty fast. I mean, was that just uh, a lot of good luck or were you just sort of pushing and determined to make this happen as quickly as you could? It was, it was two, it was over two years. Yeah. And it is fast. Like people from the Smithsonian came out here to help us out. Like the punk rockers who are museum people. <laughs> and they're like, wait a second. You, you don't need to have construction done and you want to open in two months. They're like, well, yeah. It's going to take you eight months. We're like, well, we'll see about that, you know. And because it's like how punk rock is, is DIY. Yeah, I guess, huh? None of us had any idea what we were doing. And what shocks people, the same Smithsonian people are like, "Holy shit, this place looks so good." Uh, it's like you know, it's like punk rock music. It's the best music, and we're the coolest and best songwriters <laughs> <laughs> exactly but like, I, I, we just do it ourselves we don't yeah. we know what we, what to do you learn yeah. from mistakes yeah but i understand that originally you wanted to open a store what were you what was your thought of uh, of what you were going to do with a with a store it was just i had a marijuana store in vegas right eight the rent was eight thousand dollars a year for a storefront <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm going to open a punk store. And uh, yeah, I asked Lisa Brownlee if she wanted to run it. And uh, she's like, sure. And, and then maybe the next day or two days later, I have so much cool artifacts from Arturo from the Ramones because right. they were dear friends. We should put some cool artifacts in there. And I was looking at buildings and I went from 1,200 square feet to 4,000 to 7,500. And now we're in a 12,000 square foot building. And running out of space fast, I guess. Oh, need a bigger boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, no, so we're, how, we're seriously out of out of space. Yeah. Uh, so, how did how did you go about acquiring stuff? Uh, was it just putting the word out to people, or were you buying stuff at auction, or what? Well, we started by saying like these are fifty bands that are important that we need stuff by, mm -hmm. and we started reaching out to bands, and not the way to do it. Uh, no, oh, do you have a bunch of your stuff? Their stuff. Yeah. You know, it, and they don't care. 
so uh, then we got Brian Ray Turco who who did a uh, the flyer book, uh, fucked up and photocopied, and he's a collector. And Brian G from the Nightbirds, he's a collector. So now we have four or five collectors, and they're the people with the, that are fucking nutty, and you know they save everything. Yeah. You know we have Ian McKay's bus Greyhound bus ticket. In '79, when when Teen Idols went from DC to LA, you know, for one show, it, it took Greyhound across country for one show at the Hong Kong Cafe. That's the kind of shit we have. We have we have Dave. We have a letter from Dave Grohl to the, a hardcore band called the Necros from Mount Maui, Mount Maui, Ohio. You know, I mean, I love Necros, and it says, "Hey, you guys, I I like your band. Any info when you're going to play DC?" Can you send me some stickers? David Grohl. <laughs> From 84 when he was 14. And it's just amazing what people save in their in their basements and shit. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Pat Smear's first royalty check for $8.34 for the first drum seven inch. Like that's my favorite thing in the museum. Yeah, that's that's the thing you're gonna rush in and save if the building burns down. I mean, when Chris Ashford from What Records is like, I have all these canceled checks. I mean, you have the canceled checks. <laughs> Charlotte Caffey from the Go-Go's. She has one for fifteen dollars and cents <laughs> when she was in a band called The Eyes. Yeah, and this stuff for me, it's just like it's so amazing. Is there anything from your past that you wish you had kept that's kind of vanished into the ether and you'd love to find it again? Sorry. Yeah, my virginity. <laughs> well that's long gone my friend we're that's not coming back oh, yeah. yeah all my holes have been used uh that's that's uh tmi anyway uh yeah th there's well i have one big regret in life what's that you probably shouldn't print this you make me look lame uh i had i had a tea time with mark calcavecchia and i didn't i didn't make it yeah, not very punk rock, but we'll we'll allow it. I mean, and, and at the time, he shot the lowest score in history of golf, yeah. thirty-one. Are you a big golfer? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And so, I, so I, talking about all these things you've got in there is is oh, what's, if that's if that's your worst regret. I think I'm doing okay. Oh yeah, you're doing okay. So what's what's the what's the strangest thing that you've come across? Just the flat out weirdest thing that's that's come across your desk at the Punk Rock Museum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hmm. No, no, I, I don't I don't think I have one. I mean, huh? uh, getting Joe Strummer's last bag of weed is pretty cool. So and, are you you have Joe Strummer's last bag of weed? Yeah, spider. Stacy from the Pogues gave it to us. <laughs> have you have you rolled it up and tried it to see if it's still uh, potent enough? Or? You know what? I ain't no fucking hippie, dude. I, I don't use soft drugs. All right. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, but we were going to get sturgeon from leftover cracks, last crack pipe. Yes. But he he thought we were too commercialized, and he didn't give it to us. But you <laughs> know what? I have I I have an intention of just buying one. Uh, I've never smoked crack. Getting someone to smoke crack and putting it in and saying it's his. Why not? What's he going to do? Oh, fuck yourself. Exactly. Is there anything that you've turned down or anything you wouldn't accept? Uh, seriously, uh, we've had we've had discussions about what bands we should not include. Okay. And you know because like like screwdriver. Mm -hmm. They're a racist band. Yeah. They are not in the museum. Right. But everyone agreed on that. But then there's bands like Fang from mm -hmm. Berkeley, where the singer killed his girlfriend and he was on America's Most Wanted. He did 12 years and now he's sober and he's a decent guy. But half the staff was like, no, he murdered this woman, Dixie. And we kind of, I kind of decided we're historians. We're not punk rock PC police, right? Yeah, well, but, we, but we all agreed on screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy one, though. <laughs> yeah. But like you know, if you did a terrible crime because you were a junkie, and you 
you did your time. It doesn't mean your band gets forgotten. Right. Well, he paid the price, obviously. He's done, you know, yeah. So yeah. fair enough. Um, what about Canadian stuff? I know you've got Dave Gregg's guitar from DOA. Is there uh, are there some other Canadian artifacts in there? Yeah, there's four of my DOA records. <laughs> Trying for the ignorance and uh and you know, there's a big DOA section. We have a mural of DOA. Oh. Huh. Like a 12-foot a photo of Joey and Randy Rampage. Oh, nice. Well, yeah, Joey's got tons of stuff. He's, you know, he's he's a giant collector of his own shit. So. Well, he hasn't given me shit. But uh but have you DOA, asked him? <laughs> I mean, they're one of the first bands I ever saw. And and I I tell the tour guides, talk about DOA because they were one of the two punk bands that toured the world yeah in like 81 82 mm -hmm. you know they 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 coined first of all they coined the expression hardcore mm -hmm. hardcore 81 is where hardcore comes from yep and like pete's been sick of it all he's here i'm like you know that's where hardcore comes from he's like what's well, new york i'm like no no DOA <laughs> coined the term yeah and uh <clears throat> i mean DOA has too much stuff in here because I'm such a fan. Well, there you go. Uh, I mean, I, and my original Something Better Change album, you know, what doesn't say DOA on the front. It's just a photo of them. Yeah. Chris Hanna and Propagandi didn't send you anything? <laughs> I see what <laughs> you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're, Propagandi, I put something up for them. And I also tell tour guides to say this, which not a lot of people realize this fat records popular punk label yeah there's a fat sound okay it, it came from propaganda yeah definitely uh if you listen to no effects's record in 92 white trash two heaps of a bean it's a cool record yeah but and they put out how to clean everything and then we put out punk and drug and clearly you can hear the influence they had on my songwriting <laughs> You know, all that, it's, it's all propaganda. Yeah. They, they raised the bar so fucking high, uh, lyrically and musically. Yeah. And then, but and, then, and, and Chris is, Chris is like a huge Rush fan. So that makes you kind of a Rush influenced band now. No, no, no. You're reaching. <laughs> you're reaching. Even though I do like, uh, no, I hate Lakeside Park, but no, all the so words. In fact, you know that. <laughs> uh, no, uh, can you imagine how good that band would be, Rush, if they had someone who could sing? <laughs> hey, I'm Canadian. I'm not allowed to say shit like that. You yeah. can get away with it. Can you imagine if they had like uh, whoever the uh, uh, Brian from what's his name from ACDC? If they had one of those guys, Johnson, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. but no, they have Getty Lee, like. He's he's you know he's like the rock Joey Cape you know uh -huh. way too much uh, uh vibrato vibrato and falsetto so so is is there any is there any like holy grail artifact that you would just love to get your hands on you know I'm I'm gonna say no because what's so special about this museum is that how many people and how many bands gave us the coolest shit. You know, we got Tim Armstrong's off Ivy guitar. Wow. And But we got Tim Armstrong's rancid, first rancid hollow body, the pink one, and that's in our jam room. You know, and I have a photo of this girl, this like 13 year old left-handed girl, and she was playing it. And the look on her face was like yeah. incredible. Like, you don't get to do that. No. You don't get to uh meet Picasso and use his paintbrushes. <laughs> no, I mean I've been to the I've been to the country music hall of fame, I've been and museum, I've been to the rock and roll thing. It's all behind glass. You can't, you know, all you can't it. touch it and no, you know, we just got what I just scored two what? days ago. I got Lemmy's stack and Lemmy's bass. No. Yeah. <laughs> so you can in our jam room, you can play Ace of Spades all day long. <laughs> The, isn't there like an insurance aspect to some of this stuff where no, people want to? Well, Lemmy's dead. Did you know? Have you yeah, heard? I've heard, but yeah, somebody still owns that, you know? 
but uh, that's the thing is, you think Lemmy would have wanted his bass to be played by people? Of course he fucking would. Of course, of course he would. He would. And, but I'm and guessing so, Pat Spear from Germs, Nirvana, Foo Fighters. His guitar, his Hagstrom first Germs guitar, is in our jam room. And and we also have like Rob from Strong Outs. Uh, you know, I don't know if you can make that sound sarcastic <laughs> in print. No uh, more than you can. We have we have Wesley Willis's keyboard. Wow, excellent. So that's guitar. Do you uh, can you record in the jam room? She doesn't even play guitar. Nice to meet you. Yeah, she doesn't know what I'm talking about. You know what a guitar is? How many strings are on a guitar? Okay. Can you can you is there a thing where you can record in the jam room? Well, if you if you have a phone. Oh that yeah, okay, but it's not like you, you can go campus, in. they have recording devices, yeah. uh the computers, they have everything. Huh. And you're giving tours. Uh, so what's that like for you to to you for you to give a tour to people? Are you more nervous doing that than being on stage doing a gig? Well, first of all, I'm more comfortable on stage than real life. Sure. And I don't, I did two tours, but what I like doing is jumping on other people's tours. Like Smelly from NoFX, um, and I jumped on his tour. Hey, hey, Smelly, I got you that monastery you wanted for your mom. You know, and. Uh, how do you know my mom has a yeast infection? Well, because I fucked her last night, dude. No, I'm sorry. It was last week. Look, <laughs> fucked your dad last night. <laughs> you know, but it's just too much. Do you mind? Never, never. So, I mean, what's I mean, it when you get when you really fucked my mom? So I can't <laughs> fuck his. And she's it's still fair alive. Play. It's fair play. So with 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 the. Uh, with the people giving tours, I mean, how does that work? Do the, is there some sort of a program that they have to kind of learn to go through the museum or does everybody just free ball it? You could, if you take a tour, you could take a tour with 10 different people and it's gonna be 10 different fucking tours. Because uh, what I told everyone, it's not about the museum, it's about your stories. Okay. So, uh, so they can just walk through and ignore shit and pick shit they want to talk about and and that, uh, whatever whatever they yeah, want. There's, there's a couple of cool things to to point out, yeah. like the Devo the Devo molds for the hats. The energy the dome. Stores. Yeah. Energy dome. You're you're a dork. Of course. Yeah. You knew that. So along well, with I, the I, I mean, I used to play D and D. Yeah, never. I've never done that. So you got me on that one. I just played D now. Along with. The Along with the jam room, you've got a tattoo parlor and a, a wedding slash funeral chapel, if I understand right. Has no, anybody wake, booked a funeral? Wake, yet? wake. Funerals wake. are different. Okay. Has anybody booked a wake yet? Have we booked a wake yet? Yes. And, and we've had a bunch of weddings booked. We haven't done it yet. Are you going to be officiating? You know, I work pretty hard already, dude. I, I see no limit to your your willingness to 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 jump in with both feet. No, if, when we book a bris, I'm going to do that. You don't know what a bris is, you fucking. No, idiot. I know what a bris is. <laughs> do you know what a bris is? Do you know how they came up with the name for Canada? Uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to like the answer to this, but go for it. Yes, you are. Three people that were non-binary uh, found Canada and they liked the place. And they said, we should name this place. This place is awesome. And uh, they put a bunch of letters in a hat. And the first dude goes, I got a C, eh? I know where this is going. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a good That's joke. It's a good your dad joke. joke? It's a good joke. <laughs> I got a C, eh? I got an N, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Heard it before. All right. So, so listen, you're talking about how busy you are. You've got you've got two record labels. Uh, you've owned a, a, a yeah. shit ton of There's businesses. Do you, have, do you still have the punk rock house? No. Okay, but you've done a million things. You're designing panties for men. Why why do you work so hard? Oh, I wish I knew. I think it's cocaine. Do you think that's it? It's it's the, just the drugs. No. No, it's my parents. Let me tell you about my parents. When I got straight A's, 
they didn't even look at my report card. My mom told me advice on to have sex. She said, you should have sex with a woman very slowly and make sure uh, just slow. And she didn't say uh, to choke them. She, she'd be terrible advice because she was dating this dude that had a huge cock. She told me that. Now, this is, this is TMI now. I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how that ties into your work ethic. Well, I didn't have parents. The Three Stooges and Little Rascals were my parents. <laughs> my mom went out and partied every night, and my dad didn't want to see me. So, uh -huh. so I have to overcompensate. All right. Have you, do, do you ever take a vacation? Yeah. I just went to Utah last week. What are you fucking talking about? Don't you fucking follow me? No, I don't. <laughs> Um, so you've got Take a chip break. Would you eat your pizza chips? Well, I only got 15. <laughs> Mel will be like, Mel. He's no Mel Brooks, right? Who is? No Mel Brooks is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, yeah, you know, yeah. Okay. So you've got you've got no FX dates booked into September. Are you still planning to wrap up the band this year uh, or what? You're not gonna print any of this, are you? Uh, not printing it. No, I'm I'm posting every every bit of it online. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, I don't know why I uh, no, I do. I, I actually told you the truth. I tried so hard to do stuff because uh, because I was alone when I was a kid. Hmm. Well, that means I never had a birthday party. I never had a babysitter. Really? Wow. And I actually sang those lyrics on an album and it was the most humiliating thing I ever had to sing. It was so hard to sing those lyrics. Wow. And so you just had to make your own everything happen. Yeah. Hmm. So, so are you still planning to wrap up no effects this year or, or what's the plan there? Uh, here's the mail I was talking shit about earlier. I said, she's not Mel Brooks. <laughs> You're funny, though. Thank you. I'm another Mel B. I'm more separate. You're another Mel B. I'll for you. I'll oh, my God. Is it leather? Plastic? I'm open it. Latex? I'll bring it down right now. <clears throat> Please. Yeah. Are you evading my question? What? Am I a cross-dresser? <laughs> yes, sir, I am. Why do you ask? Are right you still over. planning to wrap up no effects this year? Oh, it's next year, but we're doing our last tour. And it is our last tour ever. Okay. And, yes, and you I, it's not Motley Crew. We're done. Actually, I'm done. Okay. Because you've already got the the, the co-defendants going, and and I got to tell you, man, that album is just fucking awesome. Well done, sir. Thank you so much. You Thank are you very so welcome. So what's what's the plan with that? I mean, is that going to be is that just going to take up where you guys left off in terms of touring? And no, no, I'm not playing in that band. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to play with them tonight in San Francisco. I got to catch a flight, but I've never been so proud of an album. Mm -hmm. And the coolest thing is our second album, which will be done in a couple months, uh, is better. Really, I, I can't imagine. You know, having a label for thirty years. Every single band says our new album is the best thing we've ever done. Of course, Every you have band. to. Yeah. Uh, I usually w wait uh, six months. After I wait six months, I'm like, mm, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but after six months, everybody's already bought it anyway. So fuck them, right? <laughs> no, you know, not fuck them. Just go to Fenton's record. It's the best record I ever produced. And, you know, as you get older, you learn things. Yeah, exactly, for sure. So, so are you already thinking ahead to the next project, uh, the next plan, the next uh, you know new idea? Of course, I'm. I'm. I'm going into the business of not bringing joy to people, but teaching people how to have joy. And how are you going to do that? Oh, I got a plan. And come on, come on. <laughs> huh? I understand joy. Okay. And, and it's in front of everyone, and everyone cannot accept it. And I'm going to, I'm working on my uh, TED talk. 
It sounds it sounds to me like you're gonna start a cult. Fuck no. I'm gonna fucking teach people how to tell their partner what kind of sex they want to have. Oh, okay. That's it. Because man, if a guy could fucking show their partner what they're looking at when they jerk off, but they can't. Nobody can. Fucking cowards. <laughs> no, it's right? Therapy. Right? Do you uh-huh. show your porn to your partner? I'm taking the fifth on that. Yeah, it's exactly right. You fucking coward. <laughs> Where do you find yeah, the? I did. I was. Uh, I did study human sexuality. It was my minor in college. Oh, okay. See, I went to college. I didn't. I no shit. Yeah, I know. I, it's I, obvious. I know. <laughs> So where do you where do you find the time to do all this shit? I mean, in, in between, well, uh, I don't, dude. <laughs> when I'm not Why being up, fucking ass fucked, um, thinking. Uh-huh. What, okay, what is it? Is it done, Kiki? Oh, these are just panties. Just panties. That no insertables. All right. Yeah, I left it here. You wanted to stay here? Well, I left it here for a reason. No, no, don't even give it back to me. I've been looking for that forever. Because of the blazer and with an epitaph jacket. You want that to stay here? No. Um, no, you don't have to bring it down. You're the boss. You're the boss, but I mean, I do everything. No? Huh? So I do everything. Yeah. So you have to learn how to. Delegate. Uh, really. I, I Delegate is a word I was looking for. I said this first. No, other manager here. But we're working on it. We're gonna promote people. We're gonna demote people. Are you one of those people that likes to fire people like Trump? Yeah, I like to fire people. Is that was that your Trump impression? Yeah. <laughs> Man, so what are you Filipino? Okay. I'm gonna guess you guys don't have an HR department at the museum, huh? HR pumping stuff. <laughs> nice one. No, but you know what? That word HR comes up maybe daily. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking punk rock museum. Exactly. So listen, you're, you're, you're in your 50s. By you're, in your 50s. you're in your fucking 50s. Uh, yes, I am. And so are you. I just don't dye my hair. So by anyone's measure, you are a successful businessman and entrepreneur. You're not even that fat. Aren't you being sick of called uh, sick of being called fat Mike? They don't call me fat Mike because of my stomach, dude. I'm Jewish. We got girth. <laughs> so you see, you're never gonna get tired I'm of it. I'm like a tuna can. Uh-huh. Yeah. Can't get it in, but but. All right, my friend. I was just, I was just, I just said that because Hannah, <laughs> Hannah Reading yeah. is here. I, I was going to say again, you guys need an HR Look, who's the security guard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, insecurity guard. All right, my friend. Listen, I've taken up enough of your time. I want to oh, thank you for today. Thanks for the interview.